Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The vanity code to add us on the Roku website is one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Same for iTunes. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I had a dodgy weekend. Right on my premium channel here on YouTube, uh, Dwyer Sports Betting, I picked Mauricio Herrera over unbeaten Jose Benavides. Right, let's just say that uh, I haven't seen the fight yet. I understand Harold Letterman had the fight scored eight rounds to four for my guy, Mauricio Herrera, but uh, that's not the way the judges saw it. Apparently, the judges saw it the other way for Benavides. Um, less bear for me today. Right? Also, I uh, made a video on my um, regular YouTube channel. Right? Dwyer70905. And uh, I thought Timothy Bradley would have his way with Diego Chavez. I thought if that fight went the distance, how could Chavez possibly beat Timothy Bradley, a guy who, in my opinion, right, uh, really should be fighting Floyd Mayweather, right? Well, to make a long story short, that fight was ruled a draw. I understand some insiders are upset. I haven't seen the film of that fight yet, so I really can't give you my view on that fight. Let's just say I'm surprised to hear the outcome. Now, let's talk about another fight. And this fight is really a situation where a fighter in the moment made the wrong decision in a fight I believe was very winnable by him. And we're talking about Matt Korobov. He's fighting Andy Lee. Now let me back up a second here. Because understand Andy Lee now has a share of the middleweight title. Right? Put me among those who believes that Andy Lee is yet another person who would make for an entertaining fight against Floyd Mayweather. I know I have half the country fighting Floyd Mayweather, but understand some Mayweather matchups are more tantalizing than others, right? I'll say this, Andy Lee hits hard, you see that here. As you look at the film of the fight, and I have the highlights in my YouTube favorites folder, right? You're going to notice that Lee, a southpaw, throws his Sunday punch, right, with his right hand. Karabov is completely surprised by that. That's what changes the fight. That's the punch that has Karabov's dazed and confused looking at Lee, right, you know, doing a little dance backing up from Lee and then looking at Lee, badly hurt, right? Make no mistake, Lee's a puncher. Make no mistake, Lee has power in both hands, right? First, let's talk about Karabov's mistake. At that moment, at that moment, in a fight where Karabov was outboxing Lee, Matt Karabov should have conceded the round to win the fight. You get hit with a bomb like that from a guy you're outboxing methodically. Right? I believe if you've been hit hard before, you know in that situation to take a knee. Right? Boxing's chess. Don't be a he-man. Don't think you have to win every round of every fight. Right? The vets know better. Listen to your body. If you're hit with a bomb, take a knee. Understand. The next 10, 15 seconds after Karabov gets hit with the bomb, Andy Lee's not in a neutral corner. Karabov's not on the canvas, you know, listening to the ref, right, 
thinking to himself, wow, what did he hit me with? And hey, okay, how much time's left in this round? Let me hug this guy to death. It's a 10-8 round. Let me make it to the next round. Let me continue to methodically beat up this guy after I have some time between rounds to recover and after I have some time between rounds to listen to, right, a second opinion on exactly what happened from my corner. That would have been the smart move. I believe fighters who have been hit hard, right, figure out that, hey, I need to take a knee. Matt Karabov doesn't take a knee. Instead, this unbeaten fighter, this decorated amateur, this guy with little experience of getting hit like this in a professional fight, Besides, he's going to play He-Man. He's going to stay upright. Andy Lee's able to come in and empty the gun, right? Lee doesn't give him time to think. Karabov, who doesn't have his equilibrium, who would have been better off on a knee taking an eight count, right? Keep in mind, you can practice your behavior on the canvas, right? You're dazed and confused, you know, just in training camp, figure out how to look at the referee, figure out how to sheepishly, you know, nod a little bit, let the ref know, hey, it's, you know, I'm good, I'm good, you know, I got hit with the bomb, you know what, you know, I was in this fight before I got hit with the bomb, you know, I was winning the fight before I got hit with the bomb, I'm good, right, he stung me, I'm here on a knee, I'm gonna get up at the eight count, don't wait for the 9 or 10 count, like we've seen people like Malik Scott do, right? Be coherent. I, I, I get the feeling some of these guys hit the canvas and they think, oh, I got 10 seconds. No, you don't. You got up to 10 seconds, right? Then Karabov could have gotten up, could have literally stuck a jab out, been on his back foot. If Lee gets too close, hug him, right? Now Karabov knows Lee with a lethal left, also has a great right hook. Instead of taking a knee, Karabov gave away the fight, right? He doesn't get knocked down, right? He's dazed and confused and standing up. He would have been better off getting knocked down because instead of having any time to gather his thoughts, he just gets blown out of there. Kenny Bayless looks at the two guys, realizes that only one guy is throwing punches, and that guy's throwing punches with some strong intentions, and that plug is pulled, right? Karabov gets his first loss. So let's get back to Mayweather, right? Now understand, I'm a firm believer that Amir Khan has made his case for a match against Mayweather, right? The boxing fan in me would love to see that match. Although I suspect that, you know, it'd be a bad one for Mayweather. In other words, Amir Khan's a quick starter, right? Blinding hand speed like this shows up early in fights, right? He comes out, you haven't seen his, this level of hand speed. He starts slapping you upside the head, right? You don't know the angles. You're caught off by the speed. You know, it's hard to duplicate how Khan carries his body in training, right? You're not going to get a guy who uses length and has speed like this together, right? The Floyd Mayweather against an American could easily lose the first three rounds. The fight would then become a situation where Floyd has to make up those three rounds just to break even. Floyd's a counter puncher. He's not a lead puncher, although he can lead, right? But he's not one who's going to be able to stalk, in my opinion, Amir Khan for the remaining nine rounds. And, of course, let's face it, as you're trying to stalk Amir Khan to make up the deficit, there are bullets coming back. But people need to realize that Amir Khan is going to celebrate a religious holiday, Ramadan, right? And would be unavailable for a September fight. So if Mayweather is being real and saying, I only have two fights left, May, September, then it's now or nothing 
for a Mayweather Khan fight. Either Mayweather picks Khan for his May fight or he bypasses Khan. Now, I've made this argument here online, and I, I've heard from YouTube Nation that great timing beats hand speed. To those people who believe timing beats hand speed, and I agree with you, right? In fact, um, the guy who beat Shane Mosley the first time, the great Vernon Forrest, said exactly that. He said, look, you know, a good jab and timing beats you know, hand speed, right? And he showed it in the fight. But to that crowd, let me ask you, have you actually looked at Amir Khan's timing? Folks, it's great. Amir Khan's jab's on the money. This isn't hand speed in a vacuum. This is hand speed with timing. Something kept Devin Alexander on the outside. Right? You know, understand Amir Khan has timing. Amir Khan has angles. What he might not have, quite frankly, is the great chin or the temperament when the bullets start flying. But Mayweather's low volume. Right? Mayweather's not in there, you know, throwing caution to the wind. He's not Orlando Salido. Right? The uh, room temperature isn't going to get that high. Mayweather's more surgical. He likes to pick his spots. He's not going to come in like Danny Garcia and just start trading, saying, okay, hey, let's go. Right? <laughs> you know, the third round of the Danny Garcia fight uh, against Amir Khan. It's like, okay, let's go. I'm, I'm throwing heavy punches. That's not Floyd Mayweather. Well, let me talk about a guy I do think Mayweather can be in this video. I've mentioned it before. And that's middleweight champion Andy Lee. Understand, I feel that 10 years from now, forget that, five years from now, when we look back at the Mayweather legacy, if Mayweather in his last fight or next to last fight wins the middleweight title, we're all going to say, wow, that's a wow. That's a wow moment. Right? It's impossible to think about the Ray Robinson legacy without thinking about the Joey Maxim light heavyweight title fight. Right? Well, let me say this. You know, understand Amir Khan, the problem with talented guys with big egos and fragile chins is Amir Khan from time to time is going to have car crashes. Right? He's lost multiple times recently. Right within the last few years, the fighter is still at the top of the game, right? Lamont Peterson, that fight, even if you think the scoring's dodgy, that fight goes 12 rounds, right? The Danny Garcia fight. The problem with Amir Khan is in the moment, we know he's a talent. But history is going to see losses on his dossier at 140, it might look like Mayweather's picking a guy who hasn't had that many welterweight fights for his last, you know, fight, right? All I'm saying is a fight against Miguel Cotto, current light heavyweight, excuse me, current <laughs> middleweight, I'm getting ahead of myself, current middleweight champion. By the way, that's how great Ray Robinson is. It's hard to believe he fights for the light heavyweight title. Right, that would be like, you know, a middleweight fighting Kovalov in his farewell fight. That's before Ray Robinson did what boxers do and came back. But my point is this, if Mayweather fights a middleweight champion, keep in mind he holds the welter and junior middleweight title already, then all I'm saying is 10 years from now, that's going to translate with the next generation. 20 years from now, that's going to translate with the next generation, right? Implicit in the statement of, you know, tell me about Mayweather's last few fights. Well, you know, in his last few fights, he fought uh, for the middleweight championship. Implicit in that statement is that the fight was dangerous. Now, if Mayweather doesn't want the addendum of, well, he fought Cotto before, he had beaten Cotto before, 
And, you know, then he fought Kodo again when Kodo got a middleweight championship. But Kodo himself really wasn't a middleweight. If, if he doesn't want that mouth, that mouthy explanation, let me say he needs to take a hard look at Andy Lee. You know, Andy Lee would pull a crowd. Right? I'm not expecting Mayweather to go to Belfast to fight Andy Lee, but let's just say this. Andy Lee just got a stoppage win over Matt Karabov. We haven't heard the last of Karabov. He's going to be back and he's going to have a great run in his career. He's talented. He just didn't know to take a knee in this fight. And boxing is a you know an event game, right? It's how are you doing that night at that moment you can be the better fighter, you can lose by stoppage, right? Understand if Matt Karabov goes on to a great career, that would reflect positively back on a man who beat the man who beat Matt Karabov. Let's talk about Andy Lee, too. I know Lee looks great here. I know Lee is with Adam Booth, right? I think, you know... Any promotion would be a great promotion because uh, Adam Booth is one of boxing's elite trainers, right? Andy Lee would shine a light on Irish boxing. But people need to understand that even though Lee looked good here, at least in the last round of this fight, right? I thought he was losing the fight, but that's my view. Understand that Lee looked bad in his prior two fights, the Frank Horta fight and the fight against John Jackson, right? Now... Knockouts cause amnesia. I'm sure the world has forgotten just how bad he looked in that Jackson fight before he got the stoppage. Right? What I'm saying is this. I believe the stoppage here against Karabov has us overlooking the fact that Lee doesn't have Amir Khan's hand speed. Isn't high volume. In fact, if you research CompuBox numbers, you're going to find out that he's below average in terms of volume for middleweight. Right? And so the point is, you know, Andy Lee, who's been with some of the best trainers in the world, Emmanuel Stewart, now Adam Booth, right? Andy Lee, who would bring a lot of fans of Irish boxing to any matchup against Floyd Mayweather. You can imagine if Mayweather were promoting this fight and went to Ireland, you can imagine the streets being filled, right? While there's no question that Andy Lee would probably be the hardest puncher Floyd Mayweather has ever faced, Mayweather would have his opportunities. There's a gap here in terms of boxing ability that Mayweather would be able to exploit. Let me say this, too, right? There's film of guys going several rounds against Andy Lee, looking great against him, right? You know, uh, this Karabov fight, I thought Lee was getting outboxed. So understand, Mayweather has many options, right? Amir Khan, Manny Pacquiao. Right? Keith Thurman. I'm sure the Thurman people would love to fight Floyd. Right? I know there's an Arislandi Lara crowd out there. No question about it. I don't think Floyd fights Lara because, again, like Khan, I think that's too dangerous a fight. Just food for thought. Right? People, people who claim that Floyd's afraid of Manny... Uh, don't understand that there are bigger men in the ring who would give Floyd many more problems than Manny Pacquiao. One of them is Arislandi Lara. Well, let's just say, if I were Floyd Mayweather, and I want to go out with a bang, another path is to literally line up two of the middleweight champions. Right, Cotto? If he wants to dance. If he doesn't, Andy Lee. I think Floyd could beat both, right? I'll agree. I'll agree. In the moment, I believe all of us understand that there is the ghost in the background of Janady Golovkin. No question about it, 
right? If I were Floyd, I wouldn't hop in those waters yet, right? I would, you know, let me also say too, that if Golovkin goes on a run and has the belt for several more years, historians will wonder what would have happened if he would have fought Mayweather, especially if Mayweather beats one of the other middleweight champions. If I'm Floyd and there's a huge height gap, right, people would wonder how Floyd's going to do it. But if I'm Floyd, I'd look hard at a possible matchup with Andy Lee. Right? Why? Because Lee has the belt. Because there are highlights of devastating knockouts by Andy Lee. Right? Lee has the fan base, in my opinion. It would come together for a fight against Mayweather. Right? People on that side of the Atlantic know well who Floyd Mayweather is. Right? It would bring together, you know, some of the more accomplished people in boxing. Right? Adam Booth. Keep in mind, another Booth client is David Hay. Right? Booth used to be with the Saint, George Groves. Right? Booth engineered a masterpiece to me. I, you know, I'll give Groves credit against James DeGale. I thought he lost the fight. But Lord knows he was prepared for the fight, right? Andy Lee's another person for Mayweather to consider. In my opinion, too, and I've said this in other videos, losing to a middleweight, Floyd's unbeaten in his career, but if were he to lose to a middleweight, and understand with both Cotto and Lee, all it would take is one punch, right? You saw Cotto drop a legitimate middleweight champion, in my opinion, one of the better middleweight champions, Sergio Martinez, several times. You saw Andy Lee with his off hand change the course of his fight against Matt Korobov, right? In fact, the Jackson knockout's even more dramatic, right? Jackson hits the canvas, folks, it's over, right? My point is this, if Floyd gets caught in his next fight, we would forgive him for the loss, just like we forgave, historically, Ray Robinson for losing to Joey Maxim. Right? You know, when you hear about that fight, you hear about how it was so hot, the referee had to be replaced. The ref suffered from heat exhaustion. Right? Ray Robinson suffered from heat exhaustion. Right? It's only Joey Maxim who points out, hey, I was, I was fighting in the same heat as the other guys. You know, give me credit for the win. Right? If Mayweather loses to Khan, it'll look like the torch has passed to a new generation, right? That Mayweather no longer is the big man at 147. If Mayweather loses to Pacquiao, trust me, there'll be revisionist history, right? No one seems to remember, you know, that Mike Tyson was a shell of himself when he fought Lennox Lewis, right? You would hear that Pacquiao was the dominant fighter of that era in Mayweather's weight class. Right, so if I'm Floyd, I try to bypass all that. I'd consider challenging myself and taking out these middleweights. He could fight Andy Lee next. He could fight Miguel Cotto in September. Right, then sign off his career. Understand if he wins the middleweight title, he'd be holding three belts. In fact, more than three belts, but he'd be holding belts in three different divisions during his swan song from the sport. Just know this, Andy Lee's lower volume. I know Andy Lee's about 30 years old, but his reflexes don't look that great, right? No one's gonna confuse John Jackson with a great boxer, but yet he was methodically outboxing Andy Lee, right? I thought Andy Lee was losing the Korobal fight I believe the reason why Lee has two W's is because of great punching power. He has a great long left hand. He is a slick southpaw. He has a great right hook. Mayweather, the shorter man, would be able to counterpunch him to death if he gets inside on Andy. I'm not sure if Andy would know what to do. Right? Mayweather has many options, many big fights. Um, understand, too, a fight between the two guys obviously would be the biggest payday of Andy Lee's career. 
it would certainly be one that sold to the public as, you know, here's Andy Lee beating a legitimate opponent, Matt Korobov. Right? Here's Andy Lee showing power against John Jackson, right? Obviously, the highlights would show the last rounds of both fights. I think that would get people energized. I think Mayweather, though, has proven time and time again, whether it's against Diego Corrales, whether it's against Marcus Maidana, whether it's against Saul Alvarez, that he can fight big punchers, huge punchers, and not have his chin tested the entire fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.